Hello friends, my name is RealMail and welcome back to another edition of Forza Top Gear Laps. Today we're taking a look at Community Choice. This is where you guys got to go ahead and pick the cars for today's episode. We begin with the 2015 McLaren 650S. 641 horsepower, 500 foot pound of torque, 3,148 pounds of weight. This is the most powerful car here today. Also the most torquey. One quick thing I should mention about Community Choice is thank you all very much for your submissions. There was a hell of a lot of them actually. A lot more than last time. Uh, those ones for the modern Modern supercars, do not fear, while not many of them are here in this episode, there's not many supercars, the 650S is the only one, uh, those will be coming in the coming weeks, like literally I had those penciled in for the next couple of episodes, so do not worry about those. Anyways, the McLaren 650S, uh, not a huge fan of the way this car drove to be honest with you, it is better as you get along to higher speeds, it is extremely quick as well, which does make attaining those higher speeds easier, but overall for me, it's just a less controllable, slightly quicker uh, McLaren 12C. No doubt that it is quicker than a 12C, but for me the handling just isn't quite as settled as it is in the 12C. It doesn't quite feel as ahead of the competition as the 12C does, you know, when you compare it to the 458 Italian and so on and so forth, the 12C feels miles ahead. Well, the 650S, unfortunately, does not feel ahead of, say, a Lamborghini Huracan or something like that. Next up, we have the 2011 Lotus Evora S, 345 horsepower, 295 foot pounds of torque, 3,168 pounds weight. Surprising that this Lotus is actually 20 pounds heavier than that big old McLaren, isn't it? Again, this is supposed to be the everyday uh, Lotus Grand Tour, basically uh, kind of similar to the Esprit, I guess. Although, eh, calling this a supercar, you could probably get away with calling the Esprit a supercar back in its day, but uh, the Evora. Not so much. Nevertheless, I do quite like the Evora. It is also supercharged, which is quite nice. Uh, of course, this has got an engine from a Toyota Camry, uh, I believe it is, or some Toyota, a 3.5 litre V6 supercharged, uh, so on and so forth. Unfortunately, we do not have the Evora 400 or 420 or whatever edition they're on at this point. It's probably like the 650 by this point. Um, but anyway, the Evora is a nice car to drive. Very odd car to drive. I drove this back in uh, Forza Motorsport 6 as well and it had the, very much the same issues. It sort of feels like it's almost pivoting around a point, which is it's quite a weird feeling. It actually feels like quite a soft suspension, uh, which is weird and coupled with the fact that it's actually quite a light car. Yeah, it's, it, it's kind of indescribable how it drives, but you do need a good couple of laps to really get used to the way the Evora drives, but once you're used to it, it isn't too bad. Next up, 2002 Nissan Skyline GTR V-Spec 2, 276 horsepower, 289 foot-pound of torque, 3,417 pounds of weight. Uh, this is the heaviest car here today, although I believe... Nope, there is another four-wheel drive car here today, never mind. Um, the Skyline, uh, surprisingly those power figures, 276 horsepower, I believe it actually had more than that back in Forza Motorsport 6, so I'm not quite sure what's going on there, and I think it's fairly common knowledge the R34 was running more around 320 horsepower. Uh, but, you know, we won't let that get in the way of the fact that it is, of course, a Skyline GTR, which does mean it is a really very, very solid, very good handling car. No real surprises there. Uh, you've got the all-wheel drive, you've got a good amount of power, you've got a really well sorted uh, chassis. You know, you really can't go wrong with building one of these things, that's why many, many people do. You know, you go online, you'd probably see quite a lot of people building uh, race cars out of the various generations of the Skyline, the R34, of course, being the most popular of those. Uh, me, personally, you know, I'd more side towards driving the R32, because I do think the R32 is a really, really nice car to drive. Uh, but the R34 isn't bad, you know, it's a little bit more on the heavy side compared to the R32, but it does have the extra speed, so if you want more speed than handling, take the R34. If you want a bit more handling, drive the R32, although I haven't really driven the R32 in this game, so uh, maybe that logic is all wrong. Next up, 2004 Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 8MR, 277 horsepower, 295 foot-pound torque, 3,109 pounds of weight. Uh, this is actually the second lightest car here today, which is quite ironic considering it is a four-door sort of family saloon with four-wheel drive. So yeah, very, very light car uh, for what it is. But then again, that is one of the joys of sort of the Evos and the Impressors is they are actually rather light uh, for what they are. Also, you might notice this awesome Sparco paint job. Shout out to whoever did this. I'm sorry, I've forgotten your name. Uh, Goz taking inspiration from one of my favorite cars from Forza 1. There's a lot of cool paint jobs in this episode. I'm sure you can find them if you go look on the storefront from, from, for them, and I'd recommend them because they're all excellent. Um, 
Yeah, of course, uh, we have had an EVO around here before. We had the EVO 10, uh, which is the older version of this vehicle. Uh, this one is, well, it drives pretty much as you'd expect uh, a Lancer or an Impreza to drive. I've said before about the sort of uh, Lancer Impreza complex, you know, they are very good cars to drive. A little bit more understeering than you'd expect, uh, but genuinely quite nice cars to drive. Uh, the Evo has a bit more understeer when you push it, the Impreza has a bit more just general turn in understeer. That's usually the way uh, these cars sort of work out. But yeah, you know, you can't go wrong with any generation of Evo. Evo ain't not one of my personal favourites of the Evo generations, but uh, still a very, very solid car and none of the less. Next up, 1993 Ford Mustang Body Cobra R, 235 horsepower, 280 foot pound of torque, 3,125 pounds weight. Surprisingly, yeah, this is heavier. Uh, than the Evo, even though of course it does have a big old V8 in it, so I guess that makes sense. Then again, it is an older car, so yeah, don't really know what's going on there. But yes, of course, the Fox Body Mustang, one of the favourites among car enthusiasts these days. These things going up in price significantly, uh, which is kind of interesting considering the. I always remember the Fox Body as sort of being the lowly Mustang, but I guess that's more the SN95 these days. Uh, this is the most desirable version of the Ford Mustang, of course, with that big old 5 litre V8, 235 horsepower, SVT, Cobra, whatever, one of the final editions of the Fox Body, in fact, 1993, in fact, that would have been the last year of the Fox Body. Despite being the cream of the crop when it comes to these things, it's not a fantastic car to drive, very sluggish, uh, as you'd expect, you know. These sort of 80s, 90s muscle cars do drive very similar to each other, they just sort of feel very, very heavy, even though they're not hugely heavy. Very sluggish. Uh, this one, to be in fairness to it, does have one of the better gearboxes. The bunch, you know, you drive a Firebird or a Camaro, it has a horrible sluggish four speed auto. This doesn't quite have that. Uh, you know, it's not a bad car by any stretch of imagination. It's pretty decent. Uh, it's just, it does feel a lot slower than it actually is. Especially when you compare it to something like this. This is the 1988 BMW M5 E28. 282 horsepower, 251 foot pounds of torque, 3,230 pounds of weight. Interestingly, as I found out recently, not the version uh, with the BMW M1 engine in it. This is one of the, f well, they produced them from 1985 to 1987. This is the 1988 model, uh, one of the final models made for the US market, and it had a catalytic, uh, catalytic converter and all the rest of it, so the engine is slightly reworked from that of a BMW M1. There's a little bit of trivia for you there. Um, of course, BMW M5, one of the most famous uh, super saloons in the world, and this was the very first one of them all, the one that sort of had that famed badge from the start, the one that, uh, well, got left to carry the torch, and, well, it did, considering we have many, many M5s now, including that new one with all-wheel drive, which is would be really cool to see in Forza. Uh, the BMW M5, it is a decent car to drive, actually. It feels a lot more lively than the Fox body did, which is something I will give it credit for. It is a little bit more wallowy on the suspension, which is weird. You'd expect the Fox body to probably be a little bit more sort of weird on suspension than this is, but then again, uh, you know, you've got to remember this first BMW M5 was literally just uh, a 535i, I believe it was, with an M1 engine, just, well, not this one, uh, but, you know, a big engine just strapped into it. So, yeah, you know, it, I guess it's kind of forgivable in the sense that it does have a few, one or two issues, uh, putting down all of that power. Next up, a very interesting choice. Wasn't expecting to see this uh, in the Community Choice episode. Then again, you guys always seem to amaze me when it comes to Community Choice. This is the 2011 Peugeot 308 GTI, 197 horsepower, 203 foot pounds of torque, 3,113 pounds of weight. This is the least powerful car here today. Yeah, out of all of the hot hatches that could be suggested, very surprised to see uh, the Peugeot come in here, and it's not one that I particularly dislike. Uh, a lot of people really do not like the Peugeot 308, and I can kind of see why, you know, it is quite a heavy car uh, for what it is. Hasn't got a whole lot of power, was never really given many sporting credentials despite having the GTI badge. Uh, but, you know, I still kind of like it. We did live with the 308 for a little bit, actually, uh, and it wasn't a terrible car per se. Yeah, uh, certainly not a bad car. I actually almost like the way it looks as well. Uh, but yeah, the 308 overall as a car to drive, it is fine. Do not take this over a Civic Type R. Do not take this over, I don't know, a Golf R, Ford Focus RS, R32, whatever you want to throw at it. Do not take it over one of those because it is not the same experience. It is much, much slower than one of those cars. It's also front wheel drive. 
Um, the diff does spin, which is a little bit of a shame, does seem to have a, a bit of a dodgy differential on this car. Uh, and there is a fair amount of understeer actually, which is probably what you wouldn't expect from a sub 200 horsepower hot hatch, but it isn't terrible. You know, you can work with it, you can probably create some silly things with it. I remember we ran one of these in ETCC with rear wheel drive and a V6, so the possibilities are endless. And finally today, the 1970 Alfa Romeo Montreal, 200 horsepower, 134 foot-pound of torque, 2,810 pounds of weight, the least torquey and the lightest car here today. Of course, as you may know if you've been around on this channel, I'm a huge Alfa Romeo fan. However, when it comes to the Montreal, I never really got why people like this car. After driving around for a little bit, I can say I've been changed a little bit. Uh, I do, I kind of like some of the quirks of this car. Uh, one example of it is uh, the Speedo. Actually, you know how a rev gauge sort of has, you know, one, two, three, four, and it's a multiple of a thousand? Uh, well, this does that with the Speedo. It has 10, 20, 30, and it'll say times 10 on the Speedo, which I found was a little bit strange. Um, it also has some very weird headlight covers, and it does make a rather fantastic noise. Uh, as far as it goes to drive, it is pretty alright. Uh, very rolly on the suspension, you might expect that. Of course, it is the oldest car here today, 1970. Uh, it's not exactly meant to be a sports car, I don't think, either. I'm assuming it's supposed to be more of a Tora style car, maybe. I'm assuming that's the it's called Montreal. Ironically, never ever sold in Canada or the United States, I don't think. Uh, but yeah, uh, the Montreal, pretty quirky car, pretty interesting car. There are certainly alphas I would take over this, many, in fact. Um, but, you know, it's not a terrible car, and it does feel like sort of one of those cars, you do drive them every now and again that have some serious tuning potential, like the sort of cars where you could build them up, and they could genuinely be pretty sweet, interesting race cars. Anyways, on to the leaderboard, and unsurprisingly, it's the McLaren 650S, that's the fastest car today, going to 6th place with a 114.692. Interestingly enough, uh, that is only 0.4 of a second quicker than the McLaren 12C. It is uh, about a second quicker than an Audi R8 and so on and so forth. Very quick time, uh, but it's interesting to see it's not actually that much quicker than a 12C. Next up in 32nd place, we find the Lotus Avora S with 121.712. Uh, does beat out the RWB Porsche 911, loses out to the RX-7 Twerk Stallion. The Skyline GTR goes into 40th place with a 123.823. It's actually quicker than a 2015 Mustang. Uh, which is pretty interesting, does slightly lose out to the Holden HSV W427 LS motored thing. Uh, yeah, the GTR, you know, is right up there with sort of more of the modern machinery as you'd expect. Interestingly enough though, not quite enough to beat the SN95 uh, Cobra R. Moving down the board some more, we do come across the Mitsubishi Evo 8 in 48th place with 125.975. Uh, does beat out Golf R, uh, which is quite surprising. However, it is uh, about a second off of the Evo 10, uh, which is interesting to note. Uh, moving down once again, the M5 E28 goes into 59th place with 128.589, beating out the Dodge Neon, Chevrolet Bel Air, Hoonigan, uh, does lose out to the Acura Integra. The Fox Body Mustang, interestingly enough, is the second off the M5, despite being, a, uh, I believe it's slightly more in PI, in fact. Uh, it does hang around 129.592, does make it quicker than an FC RX-7 and a Mitsubishi Eclipse. Uh, not quite as quick as a Plymouth GTX and a Renault Alpine, which is not what you'd expect to say about a Fox Body Mustang. And finally today, we find the Peugeot 308 GTI in 71st place with more than 33.918. Slower than the Dodge Omni, which is interesting. It is quicker than a CJ5 Renegade, just... Uh, the Alpha Montreal goes in 73rd place with 134.563, which does mean it beats out a Ford Raptor. So yeah, uh, the Alpha Romeo is the slowest car of today, although that isn't hugely surprising, uh, I guess. But, it, you know, there, there were some surprises. I mean, the M5 beating the Fox body and so on and so forth. I wasn't quite expecting those. Once again, as I said at the top of the show, uh, if you didn't see your car here today, I am very sorry. There was a lot of submissions, and I tried to pick the most interesting of the bunch. Those of you that requested the more modern supercars and so on and so forth, a lot of the cars that you suggested are literally coming up within the next month, so uh, take a look out for those. Anyways, that is it for this episode, friends. Thank you all very much for watching, and thank you all very much for giving me your suggestions on community choice. I'm sure there'll be another one at some point. Next up, I'm going to be kicking off the regional episode are taking a look at the American cars, so join me for that. Until then, friends, thank you all very much for watching, and farewell. Over the counter culture with your cards and catalogs, the mainstream wipes the riverbed clean. You're just one, you're just
just the wrong You think you've 